Hello everyone, you welcome to this edition of the news on Equinox Television, live from my headquarters in Cameroon's economic capital, Douala. I am Babla Jonathan. In our top stories in this edition of the news, police officers disperse women of the Cameroon Renaissance Movement, CRM, political party in the nation's political capital, Yaoundé. The women were protesting in connection to the killing of students in Kumba, Meme Division, southwest region of the Republic of Cameroon and a building <laughs> leaves uh, the collapse of a building in the dollar two subdivision it leaves two persons severely injured. We give you details in this newscast. Thank you for joining us on this edition of the news. We begin in Cameroon's political capital, Yaoundé, where some women of the Cameroon Renaissance Movement, CRM, political party, uh, took to the streets protesting in connection to the killing of seven students in a school in the southwest region of the Republic of Cameroon. The women were dispersed by police officers who hindered them from manifesting their anger, frustration, and disappointment with the Cameroon government with regards to what they consider as negligence and inability of authorities to protect the children who were killed by armed men in the school in the Kumba 2 subdivision in the southwest region of the Republic of Cameroon. The women were calling for an end to the bloodshed, the killing, the destruction going on in the northwest and southwest regions of the country, but they were quickly dispersed by police officers. Take a listen to one of the women. It was so embarrassing and Today was declared a national mourning day by President-elect Maurice Capito, and it was a significant day for us, the women of the party, crying on behalf of the Cameroonian women to go and sit down, evaluate issues together, see how we women, we can take up initiative to end this war in the Northwest and Southwest, to protect the life of our children. We are the ones who give birth to these children. We feel the pain to carry them in our womb for nine months. We feel the pain during the hours of delivery. That is why we came out. And after we were blocked by the gendarme and the police, that we don't have access to our party's headquarters. This is unbelievable. It's unacceptable. This total violation of the law. And we don't know how a government who says they respect the law will be violating the same law that they put in place. That is why we had to leave the siege because we don't want any confrontation, neither with the police nor the gendarme. Like we've always said, the president-elect have always said, all our revendication in this country is pacific. It's peaceful. Then you went to UNICEF. We left, we went now to UNICEF because it was the only institution that protects the rights of children and secures the education of children. That is why we went to UNICEF to make sure that UNICEF should join us in mourning these children, to join us, hear our cry as mothers, as the voices of Cameroon women, to make sure they can do beyond their might to see that these children in the Northwest and Southwest, they get a secured study environment to make sure that our war come to an end there is a ceasefire to make sure that dialogue should be given, negotiation should be given a chance for the Northwest and Southwest, and a general amnesty such that both the separatists and the government and every Cameroonian citizen we should sit on the dialogue table and negotiate each other and call for a national reconciliation and peace day. It's as simple as that. We women, we are asking on Mr. Bia, a made decree a May decree can cease fire in the Northwest and Southwest. That is why we are calling on him to pass a May decree. A May decree with his pen sign will cease fire in the Northwest and Southwest. Grand general amnesty. And us mothers, we will come out and sit and talk and dialogue. And further revendications that are not equal to law, we will deny them. We will reject them considering that our plights have been hurt. Let them hear our cry. Let them hear our cry. Went to 
one of the women of the Cameroon Renaissance movement who went protesting today in Yaoundé denouncing what they consider as violation of the law by the Cameroon government. The Nigerian Consul General for the Northwest and Southwest regions of the Republic of Cameroon, Ibrahim Mohamed Bashin, went visiting the injured students at the Boya Regional Hospital. The students who were injured during the attack by armed men in the Mother Francisco International Bilingual Academy in the town of Kumba and he delivered Nigeria's message of peace and support to the Cameroon government and the people of Cameroon at large. The Nigerian government on the 24th of October 2020 massacre in Kumba, southwest region of Cameroon. I'm here on behalf of my country to stand shoulder to shoulder with the Republic of Cameroon at a greedy moment like this, because this incident has withdrawn a lot of worldwide condemnation. His Excellency Ibrahim Mohamed Bashish, the Nigerian Consul General for the Northwest and Southwest regions, is the bearer of President Muhammadu Buhari's message. It's so unfortunate that the human heart, the human being, can go this far. And for those who are no more with us today, we pray to the Almighty God to grant them eternal peace and for their parents to give them the fortitude to bear this irreparable loss and for the recuperating young angels, I would only say I wish them speedy recovery. With the Anglophone crisis now erasing the foundation of a stable future for a better Cameroon, the Nigerian envoy called for peace and congratulated both the medical and administration of the Southwest region for the immediate response. And for the government of Cameroon, for the governor of the Southwest region, for the regional director, they have done a wonderful job. He told me the type of surgery he has performed on one of the uh, victims. He's only a skillful person, and he said he handled it himself. Dr. Mukake Martins, the director of the Buya Regional Hospital, also briefed the diplomat on the situational state of these students. The Rejata reporting there from the southwest region. Now to the northwest region of the Republic of Cameroon, Bustela looks at efforts of government authorities and uh, military officials and officers in ensuring that peoples are not deprived of their right to education. Students and pupils are going to school in those parts of the country despite the difficult security terrain. Her report. For four years, many children in the Anglophone regions of Cameroon have stayed out of school. I'm just occupying myself with a new work like Cameroon. I went to documentation and occupy myself. In Menchum Division, school authorities say the turnout of children on campus is of increase as well as the challenges. School buildings are dilapidating, gradually becoming dead traps. For Menchum Valley, we get 68 primary schools, we get four nursery schools, where we make a total of 72. And then out of these schools, many of them do not get structures. Some they manage to get about two structures. Some of the structures, they don't be disappeared. If you go for GNP, they now come out in our school for the subject headquarters, you discover say one of them. Prior to school resumption, elements of the 32nd Task Force Company cleared some schools. Also, they renovated school buildings, repainted chalkboards, and are distributing didactic materials and benches to children in Furawa, Fungum, Menchum Valley, and Boom Central subdivisions in Menchum Division. The soldiers of the big arguments. The parents will always reach the best education for his child. Also, materials to prevent the coronavirus pandemic in schools were distributed. The military are not just doing military action, but also social action, and in order to permit the parents also to be well sensitized 
and to permit uh, children to go to school. Schools in the urban areas of Menchim are in urgent need of infrastructures as many are moving from the villages to the city center. The senior division officer of the Meme division has told the Kumba city mayor Gregory Mewanu to fight against a ghost town imposed by pro independence fighters in the town of Kumba and the rest of Anglophone uh, Cameroon. He was speaking to him while commissioning him into his functions. And in Marwa, in the final region of the country, the election of the mayor is hindered by conflicts. Innocent as he has more. Grigory Mewanun Temoyok, elected city mayor of Kumba, has been handed keys of his office by the senior divisional officer for Meme Division, Ntundong Chamberlain. This was during a meeting that saw outgoing Victor Nkelengo surrendering power to the newcomer who has a main objective, revamping the limping economy of Kumba, paralyzed by ghost towns in particular. It's all about commerce, so uh, the economy must uh, be promoted. And if you want to promote the economy, then we, should be, we, should, then we shouldn't be talking about ghost town because it's a whole day lost. One whole working day lost. We have to eradicate that for sure. Infrastructural development and provision of basic social amenities are on his project file. Look at the roads. Deplorable state. We all know that. For the past 11 years, we've not been having some proper road maintenance. Uh, it is also true that we have actually about 96% of our roads in Kumba, which is still earth road. But then, even earth roads are supposed to be maintained. We need to extend the pipeline water network in Kumba to make sure that you know, even those at the outskirts or in newly developed quarters are supplied with water. We move forward to light. Light is what, I mean electricity, lighting, is what actually brings forth uh, uh, security. In the far north region, Electing a new mayor of the Marwa One Council still proves impossible as a result of persistent tension between the two candidates. As going mayor Hamadou Hamidou with good number of councillors on his list and Isa Yusuf Balabe. Elections scheduled for Tuesday, October 28th failed due to resistance as one of the two candidates was about to be eliminated. Yeah, These did not work according to the senior divisional officer for Jamari Division, Jean-Marc Ekouambarga. The Marwa municipal election that started at 2 p.m. and ended late at night was postponed to this Friday, October 30, by a representative of the eldest member. Election of Hamadou Hamidou as mayor of Marwa 1 was counseled by the Supreme Court in the context of the post electoral dispute. Thank you, Innocent Aze. Now to the Dwala 2 subdivision where two persons have been severely injured after a building collapsed on them. The building was under construction in the Monkam neighborhood, Dwala 2 subdivision. Immaculate Fogui has more. <laughs> Millions of friends CFA last within a blink of an eye following the collapse of a story building under construction at the Newbell neighborhood Dwala 2 subdivision. The incident that occurred at 6.30 a.m. left two persons severely injured. I was awoken after hearing loud noise. I later rushed outside and I noticed that a story building under construction had collapsed. These are some of the consequences of being in a rush while carrying out construction work. Luckily enough, no one died, but two others were severely injured and enormous material damages recorded. Now you don't bring powder for Kachea. Yeah, we, we have to say that we were caught around uh, 7 a.m. this morning. In fact, we received an information that a, a story building under construction has just crumbled. 
So we rushed uh, to the scene and we noticed that effectively the structure was totally brought down. What we had to do is just to secure the, 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 the environment as we met uh, three victims, of which we took them directly to the hospital. Those living around the building have an axe to evacuate the area in order to avoid a similar incident. And as you can see, the structure, all the other structures around the main building have received, uh, let me say, a, a real shock in it. And they just need to, we are now asking the population who are staying around the main building to leave the place because the danger is permanently around. So I can thank you. Thank you for that. What must have prompted the collapse of the story building is still unknown. Talking Point is up next. Thanks for staying with us in Talking Points. Gilbert Ngimdo is a historian and a civil society leader. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much, Mr. Babila. I'm glad to be here after some break that I took. And, uh, right. I'm happy being back. Saturday, 31st October 2020 has been declared National Morning Day. This is containing a presidential decree and the national flag will be raised at half mask across the national territory in honor of the students killed in Kumba. Is this a um, decision that can comfort uh, the communities concerned, the people whose children were killed, and the nation at large. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, that issue can be tackled at uh, about three levels. I would like to begin from the official, the legitimate and the legal point of view. Uh, I want to say that it is but normal that the state, the country at large, should recognize the demise of little children who had little or nothing to do with a conflict that has gripped the country for more than four years now. It was but normal. So I want to uh, acknowledge by uh, uh, recognizing, like every other Cameroonian, that uh, the government has done well to actually give a day to show the families concerned that it isn't only their problem, but that of the whole nation. At the second level, I will also say that uh, I, will, uh, I will come in a little bit now with uh, a kind of grudging attitude in that the response from the government and precisely from the President of the Republic, which I read his communique, his tweet was a little late. Because, you know, uh, the President of the Republic is not there by chance. He is voted by Cameroonians and he assumes responsibility whenever the life of a single Cameroonian is at stake. And when he is not prompt to assuring, guaranteeing and securing the life of any single Cameroonian, there is a problem. His reaction came in two days after that. That was late, very late. For somebody For those who are close to him will say that uh, better late than never. That is arid nonsense. Those who are close to him are do not those who have voted to rule this country. The president, Mr. Bia, was the one voted to rule this country. Not some people around him who want to take everything for granted and do what they like. No. The president should be told clearly by Cameroonians like me, like you, like any other one. Because there is no Cameroonian that is more than another. When you are appointed to a position, it is because you have been given responsibility to serve the people. The president, at least, cannot do everything alone. He has to commission people into various responsibilities. And I don't think because he has signed to commission some people to serve Cameroonians, they will then think that they have to do what they like. They want to defend the head of state where he is where he is supposed to have been told what he is supposed to do. I don't think that somebody will say better, better late than never is not in this case. There are cases the president should know that he came late, he came in the wrong way, he was not even supposed to come, or the president should know that it was full responsibility he Speaking is supposed to Speaking in Kumba, the Minister of Territorial Administration said that the head of state is winning the war against terrorism. 
that's, uh, that's, that statement has no sense in it. That statement has no sense. In the eyes of everybody, even a layman, even a child that is born today know that that statement has no sense because how is he winning the war? From when he declared the war up to today, how is he? If he is winning the war, that war wouldn't have lasted for as long as we are now. And as we talk now, if we continue to see celebrations up and down over social media, and uh, very clearly, it is proof that there is no war won. Let there right. be coordinated government action. And on the part of the independents, let there be coordination claims All right, from the Gilbert, government, not Gilbert, We will certainly come back another day to elaborate more coming up an exclusive interview with the ex-president of Ivory Coast, Laurent Gbagbo, within the context of elections in that country. Goodbye.